Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, April 2nd, I believe, today. And, well, I'm filming this anyway. I, hopefully, I'll get this up today or tomorrow. And I'm sorry I'm not here making videos and having fun with you. I really thought, and it was my intention, to do a lot more video making now that we are kind of locked down here. But I do have a little kid at home, and... I don't know what I was thinking. He is a busy guy and he needs to stay busy and he needs to stay out of trouble because he's done some very interesting things. Um, decided to take all the tomatoes out of the refrigerator and go tomato bowling on the trampoline. So that means that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kinda, kinda busy hanging out with him. More, more so than I thought. We, I thought he'd be, you know, doing his little homeschool here next to me and I would be just making art and you know, we'd have this little idyllic month or two of this, but not so much. He gets bored pretty easily and it's hard for a little guy to be stuck in the house, especially my guy, He's he doesn't have any siblings his age. Nobody to hang out with and play Legos with and all that kind of good stuff. So he's really, really bored. And honestly, please don't tell anybody or at least don't tell his teachers, but we gave up on the whole schoolwork thing about day four in. I, I made out a little schedule of how our day was gonna go and what you know time of day he was gonna do homework and a little PE and a little this and a little that. And I think it lasted a couple days and we just all fell apart all over it. it. It just, you know, we're just taking the days now as they come. This is uncharted territory. Nobody's ever had to do this before. Um, and so, you know, you don't know what to expect or how you're going to feel. And it's not terrible, at least not for us, because we are lucky to be well. Um, we're lucky to have a nice, warm, safe home to shelter in, you know. I feel safe in my home. And um, we live in a nice part of the world where the weather is mild. Uh, let's see, we have what we need. I mean, you know, we have plenty of food and and we all still have our jobs. So I can't complain about this whole shelter in place thing. We're pretty lucky and I happen to live in a really good community where they're taking good care of us. I wish things were different and mostly I just wish people weren't getting sick, honestly. I can, I can stay in my house if it means other people aren't gonna get sick. If it means I'm not gonna get sick, but really if it means other people are going to be well. This is a small price to pay for other people not getting sick. And I won't go into the politics of that. And it's just, that's just a messy place I don't want to enter into just because I um, have friends and relatives who happen to be very conservative and some who are knee deep in conspiracy theory and have opinions different than mine. You know, people are getting sick and it's real. Um, and, you know, if it's 5,000, 2,000, 10,000, 100,000, I don't care. Every person's important and deserves to be protected. So here I am in my studio this morning. I slept in, decided to come out here and start working on this little thing I'm working on. Now, my plan was to get a ton of babies done and, and to do all this stuff. And I thought I was just going to be super, super productive, and I'm not. I'm doing yard work, I'm hanging out with my kid, I'm cooking a lot, I'm cleaning up after cooking a lot, and you know, just taking life a little slower. But this morning I am going to be out here for a bit. So last video I made, I was sculpting and making jiggly silicone babies. And I went and made babies until I ran out of silicone. And this little baby, I just used the very last of my silicone. So the fluke and the top of the head is without silicone, but this is easy enough to fix. What I'm gonna do is, in this exact color, pour the fluke and pour the top of the head in the mold, take it out and just glue with silicone it on and smooth it out and it's gonna be fine. That's in theory, let's see if it works. I 
made one of the, these little tiny guys, the first one, and he was an absolute wreck because I didn't use the vacuum extractor and there was tons of air bubbles and all that kind of stuff. And I probably should have dumped him in the trash, but I didn't want to. He was just too cute. And so I painted him and he's got moss and seashells. And he's very, very, very imperfect, but I thought he would be perfect for this. And so he has sand on him and he's just painted really rough. And I wanted him to look like something you would find washed up on the beach late at night or, you know, inside of a little, um, a little corner in a, in a wrecked ship. So, I had this idea, since I'm on a roll, let's make another fantasy baby, and I couldn't decide what to do. I thought, well, maybe I'll make, I had this idea of like making a little baby coming out of like a conch, a shell, and I thought, well, you know, I just did the sea, the sea baby mermaid thing, and let's, let's do something different, and I couldn't think, and I couldn't think, and I couldn't think, and then I woke up at like, I don't know, four o'clock in the morning thinking about it, wondering if I should just get up and start my day or try to make myself go back to sleep. And um, about that time for me, I feel super creative. I don't know why. I think it's because my brain is super relaxed. I'm not thinking about bills or kids or what we're going to cook or errands I have to run. I am just kind of in this super weird, mellow, half dream state. So Usually if I'm thinking about arty things, I usually come up with some cool stuff. And I did. So I have this history. It's kind of weird. It has to do with my parents. It has to do with alien abduction. No, I was not abducted by an alien. Um, and do I think that aliens are out there and they're visiting us and taking us up in ships? Uh, I don't think it's impossible. I mean, really think about it. It's a huge universe that we share with trillion other universes and we can't be the only planet that supports life. We don't know how long we've been here. We don't know how long other people have been wherever they are and so I really don't have like an answer. Like It, it just doesn't make sense that there wouldn't be other beings out there somewhere. Um, are they visiting us and doing things? Well, I don't know. Look at humans. We do it. We go into the ocean and we find things that we've never seen before and we pull them on out and pull them on up and we put tags on them and experiment with them and put them in zoos and do all kinds of weird stuff. So, I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that, you know, I had this thing with my parents, and I'll tell the story later, but it has always made me interested. Skeptical, but interested. And that means I've watched a lot of weird documentaries and read a lot of weird books. I don't think that people who think this way or believe this way are weirdos. I just think it's outside of my normal. It's outside of a lot of people's normal. And so it's exciting, it's fascinating, it's creepy, it's all kinds of things. So I just use the word weird for it. I thought, wouldn't it be fun, excuse me, I'm gonna have some grapefruit tea, to create a hybrid alien. I mean, it's been done a million times. And I told myself, I am just going to have fun. I, this is not serious. This is, this is just for fun. And I want to make it cute and I just have a good time. And I came up with this. Yeah. Although this is very cool, it's still wet actually. It didn't speak to me. It just was like too creepy. So I put that away and I slept on it and I got up and I made this one. Now this one's been baked just a little bit, just to harden it up. And so this is more Dolly-esque, and she's cute, and she looks more young. And I didn't make her eyes so giant and wrap around. I made them a little bit more human, just larger. And she's pretty cute. I think she's pretty cute for a human alien baby. And then I'm working on her body. Her body's really wet, but I'm gonna try to do this without wrecking it. And I'm gonna pop this in the oven for a little bit to get it firm, I'm not baking all the way, just to get it firm so when I join the head and the body, 
that I don't lose any detail. And I decided to do a three-fingered alien with the elongated fingers because that seems to be a norm across the board for people who talk about these things. I gave her a thin, long body. Again, that seems to be a story that people tell all the time. Very spindly arms and legs, long torso, head bigger than the body. So um, that was something that I borrowed from other people's stories. This exposed spine just for fun. I don't know why I did it. I just liked it. And it looks okay to me. Pop this off. I'm gonna go put this in the oven at 275 for about 10 minutes. It's gonna get baked, but not all the way. I just wanna firm it up so I don't lose detail. And then I'll bring the head and the body together. I'll use some Bake and Bond from Sculpey and some more fresh Sculpey. And I'll smooth out the neck and get that all going. I'll bring it back when I'm done. We, we had a little boo-boo here. Leg broke off. This isn't baked all the way. So um, it's still pretty fragile. <clears throat> but I don't want to bake it all the way until I get all the pieces together. And so I used the bacon bond to put the leg back together. And I will pr probably sand that down just a bit when everything's done. I'm gonna pop that little head in there. And then I'm gonna make a little neck. I'm just, I, you know, I don't know if this is interesting to you, but I will talk while I do it. Um, and I'm at a weird angle. I should have this up on a... Let me grab this. There we go. That's better. And so I'm just going to make a neck and kind of blend these two things together. Now, if I were making this as a standalone, you know, I was going to uh, sculpt this and paint it and then gift or sell this or show this, I wouldn't do it like this just because everything's going to be discolored and it's not going to be perfect. But I'm just using this to mold so no one will ever see this. But you do want it pretty smooth because that silicone mold picks up every little detail. So if you have lumps and bumps and things not in the right place, you'll just keep fighting that in the silicone and that's too much work for anybody. So what is going on here? Well, um, a couple of things. I am trying to do some outdoorsy kind of repairs and making stuff and getting ready for spring the best I can without you know making trips to stores. And that's not totally easy because a lot of this stuff I just don't have. For instance, I want some tan bark in the backyard because about every two years, I go on over to Home Depot and I load up my car with all the bags and I recover the old tan bark. It takes about two years here in the California sun for um, the tan bark to start to fade and break down and so we freshen it up every couple years. And this would have been that year we normally would have done it. And I was kind of wondering how I was going to make that happen. Now, our Home Depot is still open. Very short hours. Um, and they're like counting customers at the door, I heard. But, uh, you know, I'm trying to do my best not to go anywhere unless it's totally necessary. Like you really don't have food to eat and you really need to go to your doctor's appointment or you need the money to pay for your food and you have to deposit your check or whatever. I mean, not everybody does online stuff. You know, that kind of thing, like you need to go get dog food for your dog. For the most part, not a lot of things are essential besides, you know, food and health. And so I'm trying to be good about that because where I'm at, our curve is still pretty flat. We think it has to do with our diligence um, in regards to social distancing.